I'm about to go in depth with update 1.1.2 for Destiny 2, and we're gonna start right now. What's up, guys? Reckless here. Welcome to Guardian Watcher. If it's your first time here and you love Destiny and learning all things about the game, then subscribe and click on the bell. That way, you guys don't miss out on anything. So. Bungie has been quiet for quite some time, and that is up until yesterday, January 25th, 2018. They shed a little bit of light on what is coming soon for Destiny 2 with update 1.1.2. And it will go live Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. And this consists of many changes as well as additions to the game. Now, whether this will be a game changer, well, that decision is going to be up to you. But after I go in depth, let me know in the comments if you think that this update will be enough to change the game or if a lot more is needed. With update 1.1.2, the Iron Banner will return. It will begin from Tuesday, January 30th until Tuesday, February 6th. When it comes to Iron Banner for Season 2, the new things that we will get are a new hand cannon, scout rifle, and a shotgun for the weapons, as well as a new sparrow, ghost, and an emblem. The emblem will track how many times you rank up with Iron Banner for Destiny 2 and it doesn't matter when you did it, it'll be the entire Destiny 2 and it will carry over from season to season and you can acquire it by completing the Iron Banner milestone. All of the weapons that I just mentioned and Iron Banner armor will be available to purchase from Lord Saladin in the tower. While you are at Lord Saladin, you can go ahead and read the conditions on how to get the Iron Banner ornaments as well. Also. If you are missing items from Season 1, then they will drop as a possible reward from Engrams. And this is what your character will look like with full Iron Banner gear plus the ornaments. Besides the Iron Banner, we also have Armor Masterworks coming with this update. The same rules apply for Masterwork Armor as it did for Masterwork Weapons. We will be able to get an increased chance to obtain Masterwork Armor through Trials of the Nine or Raid Activities. And Raid Activities consist of the Raid or the Raid Lair. However, you can also get them through Engrams from the many vendors in the game. Each Masterwork Armor piece will grant us 3% damage resistance while using a Super, so a full set of Masterwork Armor will give us 15% of damage reduction. Masterwork Armor can be rerolled for one Masterwork Core and 10 legendary shards, and this will change your mobility, resilience, and recovery. However, not all at the same time. And apparently, there's already a bug that if you re-roll Masterwork Armor too fast, it'll appear that you have the same stats before re-rolling it. So, pretty much take your time when re-rolling your Masterwork Armor. So let's move on to the raid. There will be changes to raid rewards when this update goes live. Raid Armor will now have specific Raid perks, in the sense of Raid Mods. They will appear on the mod section of the armor and are reusable and once acquired and they will always remain on your list to swap back to. Now the price to swap these Raid Mods will be one callous token. And all Raid Mods will be legendary by default, so you won't have to worry about losing any power level. The only issue I see with this is you will have to make a dedicated Raid set of gear due to the raid mods being a mod that takes over the spot for your other mods. I don't know, I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see the mods list before, you know, taking a judgment on it. Next, the prestige version of the raid will now give double drops. So we will now get prestige and normal loot, that way we won't have to go back into the normal raid to do it again. Truthfully, this gives people a better reason to actually do the prestige version of the raid because not a lot of people are actually doing it because the drops weren't even worth it. Next, all raid encounters will always drop a piece of raid gear as well as give you a chance at an already decrypted exotic. This exotic is restricted to your current class. For example, if you are a warlock, then you will get exotic weapons or exotic specific warlock armor to drop. The raid vendor will now sell a rotating selection of raid gear each week. We will also be able to purchase them straight from the vendor for Legendary Shards and Callus Tokens. However, if you want to buy the Prestige Raid Armor, then you will have to have beaten the Prestige version of the raid for that week. The raid is also getting an exotic ghost shell called the Contender Shell. 
This new ghost shell comes with some brand new perks that helps rewards players even after they have completed the raid and the raid lair. Seeker of Brilliance is one of the new perks. This perk gives you a chance to drop bright engrams from encounters. When a bright engram doesn't drop from the raid encounter, an increase will be added to the next encounter. Seeker of Opulence is another perk. This perk allows a 50%, which is 5-0, percent chance for an exotic that you don't already have yet. And the last perk is called Seeker of Glory. This perk provides a tracker for the number of raid encounters you have defeated. Now, let's go over general changes for Destiny 2. For the infamous Prometheus Lens, now remember, it was nerfed to the ground about a month ago, so take these changes into consideration. The Flame Refraction perk now generates ammo instead of pulling it from reserves, and Bungie increased the base damage. Hopefully Bungie didn't make this weapon OP again, but buffed it enough so the weapon is actually playable. Bungie also fixed an issue where new characters after the release of the Curse of Osiris were not receiving the Flashpoint Milestone. Players in social spaces will now get a notification when the Postmaster is full. Multiple heroic strike completions now have a greater chance of getting exotic rewards. There are now challenges available during adventures on Mercury. Bungie fixed an issue where the Curse of Osiris strikes were not granting clan engrams when they were featured as the Nightfall. They fixed an issue where challenges were not appearing within quick play and they increased the dismantle timer for Masterwork cores. For some reason, Bungie is also working on a revamped shader system, I guess. Now, I know a lot of people have been complaining, and myself included, about you know dismantling multiple um, shaders at once, and I guess they're trying to work on something. The Destiny webcomic Fall of Osiris is getting a part 2 very soon, and when it is available, it will be on Bungie.net. In part 1 of the webcomic, a special emblem code was found in Morse code for the visionary emblem, and if you don't have it already, then here is the code. X as in X-Ray, F as in Fox, V as in Victor, K as in Kilo, H as in Hotel, P as in Papa, N as in November, the number 9, and the number 7. You need to take that code and input it in the redeem code section on Bungie.net and then log back into Destiny 2 and you should have it in the collection section in your vault. Most likely another emblem or something similar will be released in part 2 of the webcomic in some other clever way. And when I do find out, then I will go ahead and definitely let you guys know. Last but not least, Destiny 2 will undergo a lot of maintenance. On January 29th and the 31st, Destiny Services will undergo back-end maintenance, but with no downtime. And this will start at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. On January 30th, which is the day in between those two, Destiny Services will be taken completely offline for maintenance at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it will be concluded at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and Iron Banner will begin as soon as maintenance is complete. So this pretty much wraps up everything that will be happening in the 1.1.2 update that is coming Tuesday, January 30th. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if this update will help Destiny 2 get back on their feet, or if you think this is just another stall tactic to a bigger update that Bungie hasn't actually talked about yet. And if you guys enjoy this video, feel free to watch these other two Destiny videos. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.